Marcus Vitruvius Pollio, c. 80–70 BC, after c. 15 BC, commonly known as Vitruvius, was a Roman author, architect, civil engineer and military engineer during the 1st century BC, known for his multi-volume work entitled De Architectura. His discussion of perfect proportion in architecture and the human body led to the famous Renaissance drawing by Leonardo da Vinci of Vitruvian Man. He was also the one who, in 40 BCE, invented the idea that all buildings should have three attributes, firmitas, utilitas, and venustas, meaning, strength, utility, and beauty. These principles were later adopted by the Romans. By his own description Vitruvius served as an artilleryman, the third class of arms in the military offices. He probably served as a senior officer of artillery in charge of doctoris ballisterum artillery experts and libertors who actually operated the machines. Topic. Life and career Little is known about Vitruvius' life. Most inferences about him are extracted from his only surviving work De Architectura. Even his first name Marcus and his cognomen Pollio are uncertain. Marcus Cetius Faventinus writes of Vitruvius Polio Alic Octoris. This can be read as Vitruvius Polio, and others, or, less likely, as Vitruvius, Polio, and others. An inscription in Verona, which names a Lucius Vitruvius Cordo, and an inscription from Thilbalus in North Africa, which names a Marcus Vitruvius Mamura, have been suggested as evidence that Vitruvius and Mamura, who was a military prefectus fabrum under Julius Caesar, were from the same family, or were even the same individual. Neither association, however, is borne out by De Architectura, which Vitruvius dedicated to Augustus, nor by the little that is known of Mamura. Vitruvius was a military engineer, prefectus fabrum, or a prefect architectus armamentarius of the apparitor status group, a branch of the Roman civil service. He is mentioned in Pliny the Elder's Table of Contents for Naturalis Historia natural history, in the heading for mosaic techniques. Frontinus refers to Vitruvius the architect in his late 1st century work De Aqueductu. Likely born a free Roman citizen, by his own account, Vitruvius served in the Roman army under Caesar with the otherwise poorly identified Marcus Aurelius, Publius Minidius, and Gnaeus Cornelius. These names vary depending on the addition of De Architectura. Publius Minidius is also written as Publius Numidicus and Publius Numidus, speculated as the same Publius Numicius inscribed on the Roman theatre at Heraclea. As an army engineer, he specialized in the construction of ballista and Scorpio artillery war machines for sieges. It is speculated that Vitruvius served with Caesar's chief engineer Lucius Cornelius Balbus. The locations where he served can be reconstructed from, for example, descriptions of the building methods of various foreign tribes. Although he describes places throughout De Architectura, he does not say he was present. His service likely included North Africa, Hispania, Gaul, including Aquitaine, and Pontus. To place the role of Vitruvius the military engineer in context, a description of the prefect of the camp, or army engineer is quoted here as given by Flavius Vegetius Renatus in the military institutions of the Romans. The prefect of the camp, though inferior in rank to the prefect, had a post of no small importance. The position of the camp, the direction of the entrenchments, the inspection of the tents or huts of the soldiers and the baggage were comprehended in his province. His authority extended over the sick, and the physicians who had the care of them, and he regulated the expenses relative thereto. 
He had the charge of providing carriages, bathhouses and the proper tools for sawing and cutting wood, digging trenches, raising parapets, sinking wells and bringing water into the camp. He likewise had the care of furnishing the troops with wood and straw, as well as the rams, onagri, ballisti and all the other engines of war under his direction. This post was always conferred on an officer of great skill, experience and long service, and who consequently was capable of instructing others in those branches of the profession in which he had distinguished himself. At various locations described by Vitruvius, battles and sieges occurred. He is the only source for the siege of Larignum in 56 BC. Of the battlegrounds of the Gallic War there are references to, the siege and massacre of the 40,000 residents at Avericum in 52 BC. Vercingetorix commented that, the Romans did not conquer by valor nor in the field, but by a kind of art and skill in assault, with which they Gauls themselves were unacquainted." The broken siege at Gergavia in 52 BC. The circumvallation and battle of Alesia in 52 BC, the women and children of the encircled city were evicted to conserve food, where they starved to death between the opposing walls of the defenders and besiegers. And the siege of Euseladunum in 51 BC. These are all sieges of large Gallic opida. Of the sites involved in Caesar's civil war, we find the siege of Massilia in 49 BC, the Battle of Dyrrhachium of 48 BC, modern Albania, the Battle of Pharsalus in 48 BC, Hellas, Greece, the Battle of Zella of 47 BC, modern Turkey, and the Battle of Thapsus in 46 BC in Caesar's African campaign. A legion that fits the same sequence of locations is the Legio VI Ferrata, of which Ballista would be an auxiliary unit. Mainly known for his writings, Vitruvius was himself an architect. In Roman times architecture was a broader subject than at present including the modern fields of architecture, construction management, construction engineering, chemical engineering, civil engineering, materials engineering, mechanical engineering, military engineering and urban planning. Architectural engineers consider him the first of their discipline, a specialization previously known as technical architecture. Frontinus mentions him in connection with the standard sizes of pipes. He is often credited as father of architectural acoustics for describing the technique of Echia's placement in theatres. The only building, however, that we know Vitruvius to have worked on is one he tells us about, a basilica completed in 19 BC. It was built at Phanum Fortunae, now the modern town of Fano. The Basilica di Fano, to give the building its Italian name, has disappeared so completely that its very site is a matter of conjecture, although various attempts have been made to visualize it. The early Christian practice of converting Roman basilici public buildings into cathedrals implies the basilica may be incorporated into the cathedral in Fano. In later years the Emperor Augustus, through his sister Octavia Minor, sponsored Vitruvius, entitling him with what may have been a pension to guarantee financial independence. Whether De Architectura was written by one author or as a compilation completed by subsequent librarians and copyists, remains an open question. The date of his death is unknown, which suggests that he had enjoyed only little popularity during his lifetime. Gerolamo Cardana, in his 1552 book De Subtilitate Rerum, ranks Vitruvius as one of the twelve persons whom he supposes to have excelled all men in the force of genius and invention, and would not have scrupled to have given him the first place, if it could be imagined that he had delivered nothing but his own discoveries. Topic. De Architectura 
Vitruvius is the author of De Architectura, known today as the Ten Books on Architecture, a treatise written in Latin on architecture, dedicated to the Emperor Augustus. In the preface of Book I, Vitruvius dedicates his writings so as to give personal knowledge of the quality of buildings to the Emperor. Likely Vitruvius is referring to Marcus Agrippa's campaign of public repairs and improvements. This work is the only surviving major book on architecture from classical antiquity. According to Petri Luconin, this text influenced deeply from the early Renaissance onwards artists, thinkers, and architects, among them Leon Battista Alberti 1404-1472, Leonardo da Vinci 1452-1519, and Michelangelo 1475-1564. The next major book on architecture, Alberti's reformulation of ten books, was not written until 1452. Vitruvius is famous for asserting in his book De Architectura that a structure must exhibit the three qualities of firmitatis, utilitatis, venustatis, that is, stability, utility, beauty. These are sometimes termed the Vitruvian virtues or the Vitruvian triad. According to Vitruvius, architecture is an imitation of nature. As birds and bees built their nests, so humans constructed housing from natural materials, that gave them shelter against the elements. When perfecting this art of building, the Greeks invented the architectural orders, Doric, Ionic and Corinthian. It gave them a sense of proportion, culminating in understanding the proportions of the greatest work of art, the human body. This led Vitruvius in defining his Vitruvian man, as drawn later by Leonardo da Vinci, the human body inscribed in the circle and the square, the fundamental geometric patterns of the cosmic order. In this book series, Vitruvius, also wrote about climate in relation to housing architecture and how to choose locations for cities. <laughs> <laughs> Scope Vitruvius is sometimes loosely referred to as the first architect, but it is more accurate to describe him as the first Roman architect to have written surviving records of his field. He himself cites older but less complete works. He was less an original thinker or creative intellect than a codifier of existing architectural practice. It should also be noted that Vitruvius had a much wider scope than modern architects. Roman architects practiced a wide variety of disciplines, in modern terms, they could be described as being engineers, architects, landscape architects, surveyors, artists, and craftsmen combined. Etymologically the word architect derives from Greek words meaning «master» and «builder». The first of the ten books deals with many subjects which now come within the scope of landscape architecture. In Book 1, Chapter 1, titled The Education of the Architect, Vitruvius instructs 1. Architecture is a science arising out of many other sciences, and adorned with much and varied learning, by the help of which a judgment is formed of those works which are the result of other arts. Practice and theory are its parents. Practice is the frequent and continued contemplation of the mode of executing any given work, or of the mere operation of the hands, for the conversion of the material in the best and readiest way. Theory is the result of that reasoning which demonstrates and explains that the material wrought has been so converted as to answer the end proposed. 2. Wherefore the mere practical architect is not able to assign sufficient reasons for the forms he adopts, and the theoretic architect also fails, grasping the shadow instead of the substance. He who is theoretic as well as practical, is therefore doubly armed, able not only to prove the propriety of his design, but equally so to carry it into execution. 
He goes on to say that the architect should be versed in drawing, geometry, optics, lighting, history, philosophy, music, theatre, medicine, and law. In Book 1, Chapter 3, The Departments of Architecture, Vitruvius divides architecture into three branches, namely, building, the construction of sundials and water clocks, and the design and use of machines in construction and warfare. He further divides building into public and private. Public building includes city planning, public security structures such as walls, gates and towers, the convenient placing of public facilities such as theaters, forums and markets, baths, roads and pavings, and the construction and position of shrines and temples for religious use. Later books are devoted to the understanding, design and construction of each of these. Topic. Proportions of man In Book 3, Chapter 1 Paragraph 3, Vitruvius writes about the proportions of man 3. Just so the parts of temples should correspond with each other, and with the whole. The navel is naturally placed in the center of the human body, and, if in a man lying with his face upward, and his hands and feet extended, from his navel as the center, a circle be described, it will touch his fingers and toes. It is not alone by a circle, that the human body is thus circumscribed, as may be seen by placing it within a square. For measuring from the feet to the crown of the head, and then across the arms fully extended, we find the latter measure equal to the former, so that lines at right angles to each other, enclosing the figure, will form a square. It was upon these writings that Leonardo da Vinci based his Vitruvian man. Vitruvius described the human figure as being the principal source of proportion. The drawing itself is often used as an implied symbol of the essential symmetry of the human body, and by extension, of the universe as a whole. Topic. Lists of names given in Book 7 Introduction In the introduction to Book 7, Vitruvius goes to great lengths to present why he is qualified to write De Architectura. This is the only location in the work where Vitruvius specifically addresses his personal breadth of knowledge. Similar to a modern reference section, the author's position as one who is knowledgeable and educated is established. The topics range across many fields of expertise reflecting that in Roman times as today construction is a diverse field. Vitruvius is clearly a well-read man. In addition to providing his qualification, Vitruvius summarizes a recurring theme throughout the ten books, a non-trivial and core contribution of his treatise beyond simply being a construction book. Vitruvius makes the point that the work of some of the most talented are unknown, while many of those of lesser talent but greater political position are famous. This theme runs through Vitruvius's ten books repeatedly, echoing an implicit prediction that he and his works will also be forgotten. Vitruvius illustrates this point by naming what he considers are the most talented individuals in history implicitly challenging the reader that they have never heard of some of these people, Vitruvius goes on and predicts that some of these individuals will be forgotten and their works lost, while other, less deserving political characters of history will be forever remembered with pageantry. List of physicists, Thales, Democritus, Anaxagoras, Xenophanes, List of philosophers, Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, Zeno, Epicurus List of kings, Croesus, Alexander the Great, Darius On plagiarism, Aristophanes, Ptolemy I Soter, a person named Attalus On abusing dead authors, Zoilus Homer Amastix, Ptolemy II Philadelphus 
on divergence of the visual rays, Agatharchus, Aeschylus, Democritus, Anaxagoras. List of writers on temples, Silenus, Theodorus, Chersiphron and Metagenes, Ictinus and Carpian, Theodorus the Phocian, Hermogenes, Arcesius, Satyrus and a person named Pythaios. List of artists, Leochares, Bryaxis, Scopus, Praxiteles, Timotheos. List of writers on laws of symmetry, Nexaris, Theocides, a person named Demophilus, Paulus, a person named Leonidas, Solanian, Melampus, Sarnicus, Euphranor. List of writers on machinery, Diades of Pella, Archytas, Archimedes, Tejabius, Nymphodorus, Philo of Byzantium, Diphilus, Democles, Charias, Polydus of Thessaly, Pyrrhus, Aegisistratus. List of writers on architecture, Fufisius, Terentius Varro, Publius Septimius, writer. List of architects, Antistates, Kaleshris, Antimachides, Pormus, Kasuchus. List of greatest temple architects, Chersiphron of Gnosis, Metagenes, Demetrius, Pionius the Milesian, Ephesian Daphnis, Ictinus, Philo, Kasuchus, Gaius Mucianus. Topic. Rediscovery Vitruvius de Architectura was «rediscovered» in 1414 by the Florentine humanist Poggio Bracciolini in the library of St. Gall Abbey. Leon Battista Alberti (1404–1472) publicized it in his seminal treatise on architecture, De Re Edificatoria, c. 1450. The first known Latin printed edition was by Fra Giovanni Sulpicius in Rome, 1486. Translations followed in Italian, Cesare Cesariano, 1521, French, Jean Martin, 1547, English, German, Walter H. Riff, 1543, and Spanish and several other languages. The original illustrations had been lost and the first illustrated edition was published in Venice in 1511 with woodcut illustrations, based on descriptions in the text by Fra Giovanni Giocondo. Later in the 16th century Andrea Palladio provided illustrations for Daniele Barbaro's commentary on Vitruvius, published in Italian and Latin versions. The most famous illustration is probably Da Vinci's Vitruvian Man. The surviving ruins of Roman antiquity, the Roman Forum, temples, theatres, triumphal arches and their reliefs and statues offered visual examples of the descriptions in the Vitruvian text. Printed and illustrated editions of De Architectura inspired Renaissance, Baroque and Neoclassical architecture. Filippo Brunelleschi, for example, invented a new type of hoist to lift the large stones for the dome of the cathedral in Florence and was inspired by De Architectura as well as surviving Roman monuments such as the Pantheon and the Baths of Diocletian. Notable additions Latin 1800 Augustus Road, Berlin 1857 Teubner edition by Valentine Rose 1899 Teubner edition 1912 Teubner edition at the Latin Library Bill Thayer, transcription of the 1912 Teubner edition Italian Cesare Cesariano, 1521, Como, Italy, includes illustrations by Cesare Cesariano. Danielle Barbaro, includes illustration by Andrea Palladia French. Jean Martin, 1547. Auguste Choisy English. Henry Wotton, 1624. Joseph Gwilt, 1826. Bill Thayer transcription of the Gwilt 1826 edition. Morris Hickey Morgan, with illustrations by Herbert Langford Warren, 1914, Harvard University Press. 
Frank Granger, Loeb Edition, 1931. Ingrid Rowland, 2001. Thomas Gordon Smith, The Monacelli Press, January 5, 2004. Topic: Roman Technology. Books 8, X and X form the basis of much of what we know about Roman technology, now augmented by archaeological studies of extant remains, such as the water mills at Barbagal in France. The other major source of information is the Naturalis Historia compiled by Pliny the Elder much later in c. 75 AD. Topic. Machines The work is important for its descriptions of the many different machines used for engineering structures such as hoists, cranes and pulleys, as well as war machines such as catapults, ballistae, and siege engines. As a practicing engineer, Vitruvius must be speaking from personal experience rather than simply describing the works of others. He also describes the construction of sundials and water clocks, and the use of an eolipile the first steam engine, as an experiment to demonstrate the nature of atmospheric air movements wind. <laughs> Aqueducts His description of aqueduct construction includes the way they are surveyed, and the careful choice of materials needed, although Frontinus a general who was appointed in the late 1st century AD to administer the many aqueducts of Rome, writing a century later, gives much more detail of the practical problems involved in their construction and maintenance. Surely Vitruvius' book would have been of great assistance in this. Vitruvius was writing in the 1st century BC when many of the finest Roman aqueducts were built, and survive to this day, such as those at Segovia and the Pont du Gard. The use of the inverted siphon is described in detail, together with the problems of high pressures developed in the pipe at the base of the siphon, a practical problem with which he seems to be acquainted. Topic. Materials He describes many different construction materials used for a wide variety of different structures, as well as such details as stucco painting. Concrete and lime receive in-depth descriptions. Vitruvius is cited as one of the earliest sources to connect lead mining and manufacture, its use in drinking water pipes, and its adverse effects on health. For this reason, he recommended the use of clay pipes and masonry channels in the provision of piped drinking water. Vitruvius is the source for the anecdote that credits Archimedes with the discovery of the mass to volume ratio while relaxing in his bath. Having been asked to investigate the suspected adulteration of the gold used to make a crown, Archimedes realized that the crown's volume could be measured exactly by its displacement of water, and ran into the street with the cry of Eureka. Topic. Dewatering machines He describes the construction of Archimedes' screw in Chapter 10 without mentioning Archimedes by name. It was a device widely used for raising water to irrigate fields and drain mines. Other lifting machines he mentions include the endless chain of buckets and the reverse overshot water wheel. Remains of the water wheels used for lifting water were discovered when old mines were reopened at Rio Tinto in Spain, Roja Montana in Romania and Dolacothi in West Wales. The Rio Tinto wheel is now shown in the British Museum, and the Dolacothi specimen in the National Museum of Wales. Topic. Surveying instruments. 
that he must have been well practiced in surveying is shown by his descriptions of surveying instruments, especially the water level or corobates, which he compares favorably with the grama, a device using plumb lines. They were essential in all building operations, but especially in aqueduct construction, where a uniform gradient was important to the provision of a regular supply of water without damage to the walls of the channel. He also developed one of the first odometers, consisting of a wheel of known circumference that dropped a pebble into a container on every rotation. Topic. Central heating He describes the many innovations made in building design to improve the living conditions of the inhabitants. Foremost among them is the development of the hypocaust, a type of central heating where hot air developed by a fire was channeled under the floor and inside the walls of public baths and villas. He gives explicit instructions how to design such buildings so that fuel efficiency is maximized, so that for example, the caldarium is next to the tepidarium followed by the frigidarium. He also advises on using a type of regulator to control the heat in the hot rooms, a bronze disc set into the roof under a circular aperture which could be raised or lowered by a pulley to adjust the ventilation. Although he does not suggest it himself, it is likely that his dewatering devices such as the reverse overshot water wheel were used in the larger baths to lift water to header tanks at the top of the larger thermi, such as the baths of Diocletian. The one which was used in Bath of Caracalla for grinding flour. Topic. Legacy. Vitruvian Man, a drawing by Leonardo da Vinci Vitruvius Britannicus 18th century work on British architecture named after Vitruvius. Den Dansky Vitruvius 18th century work on Danish architecture, inspired by Vitruvius Britannicus. The American Vitruvius 20th century work on civil architecture by Werner Hegemann. William Vitruvius Morrison (1794–1838), the son of Irish architect Sir Richard Morrison and himself a noted architect of great houses, bridges, court houses, and prisons. A small lunar crater has been named after Vitruvius, and also an elongated lunar mountain Mons Vitruvius close by. The Design Quality Indicator DQI, tool for buildings uses Vitruvius's principles. Topic. In popular culture The leader of the master builders in the Lego movie is named Vitruvius. Vitruvius appears as a non-player character in the 2017 video game Assassin's Creed Origins. Vitruvius' work appears in The Rule of Four, a 2004 novel by Ian Caldwell and Dustin Thomason. <laughs> See also